The movie opens up with a guy named Frederico Olson who is seen performing a ritual with blood and a picture of a woman. Minutes later, a man named Warren Lee walks into the scene and cuts off Frederico's limbs with a saw. This results in the poor guy's blood being splashed onto a nearby recliner's sofa, and he is seemingly dead. In the next scene, we see three people entering a garage where they find the same sofa with a note that reads, Francesca, the woman from the picture shown in the beginning of the movie. Francesca is currently seen in a club where she works as a dancer. Her performance is suddenly interrupted by two detectives, Bob Gravy and Roseanne Grape, who are assigned to investigate the case regarding Frederico's death. The detectives interrogate Francesca and her best friend Maxie about Frederico, who happens to be their friend. Maxie reveals that this man was obsessed with Francesca to the point that she had a restraining order against him about two years ago. Shortly after, Francesca excuses herself because she is having some furniture delivered at her place. Turns out that she has purchased the same recliner sofa, being unaware of its dark history. Meanwhile, the recliner is mistakenly delivered to an antique furniture store owner named Jack, who is also Maxie's grandfather. However, the old man doesn't recognize the sofa, so the delivery guy calls a number on the note in order to find the right address. In the midst of this, Jack gets a strange feeling upon looking at the sofa. As he touches it, he experiences a vision of a woman running through the woods. He then suddenly collapses to the ground, but is somehow revived by the delivery guy. Afterwards, Maxie drops Francesca home, where they find Francesca's boyfriend TJ sitting on the delivered sofa. Maxie doesn't seem to like him and considers him gay. <laughs> Okay. But Francesca simply brushes her off. Later, while TJ gets the furniture upstairs, Francesca appears disturbed by Frederico's death. As a result, she asks her boyfriend to stay with her tonight, but the latter already has plans. That night, during dinner, Maxie's grandfather can't stop thinking about his earlier experience. He discusses it with his girlfriend, Ashanti, who thinks that he has a psychic gift like his late rabbi father. Believing that the sofa is possessed by some evil entity, Jack begins to study about the Dibuks a malevolent, wandering spirit whose name I definitely just said wrong. Upon watching a video, he learns that one shouldn't get involved in such evil acts or else it will establish a connection into one's body and mind. The video also warns that it can cause strange health problems, symptoms that are already evident in Jack. In the meantime, Francesca is showering when she hears a noise. She opens the door only to be startled by Maxie wearing a scary clown mask. The two then watch a movie together while also discussing their problems and life. Maxie reveals her decision to shut down her father's antique store due to mounting debt. She also can't seem to stop putting on clown masks. Hearing this, Francesca advises her to focus on music, as it also aligns with her passion. Before leaving, Maxie tells her not to think about Frederico, because what happened to him is not her fault. As she walks up to her car, she notices the sofa looking at her through the window, looking just like a sofa do, though it disappears upon a second glance. Later on, Francesca has an entranced sexual experience while reclining on the sofa. At midnight, she suddenly wakes up in bed as if she had a nightmare. At the same time, behind the sofa, we see a figure of the same girl that Jack saw in his vision. The next morning, Francesca wakes up and finds several candles that lead her to breakfast on the sofa. She assumes that it was TJ and thanks him for understanding her need. Candle sofa brekkie is what all girls need. On the other hand, Detective Gravy reviews the pictures of the the items from the crime scene and discovers a bunch of voodoo stuff against Francesca. As a result, he summons her and Maxie for another interrogation. During this session, Francesca says that a lot of men get obsessed with her, and one of them was Frederico. She considered him as a friend, but he wanted more from her, which is why she had the restraining order. She believes that her current partner is immune to her, unlike the other guys. This explains why Maxie considers him to be gay. Not getting why this matters, but you do you, Maxie. Meanwhile, while at home, TJ is preparing some meals when the sofa starts to move on its own. It suddenly slides forward and stabs his legs, leaving him in great pain. In a state of panic, he hurriedly calls Francesca, who then rushes home along with the detectives. Upon arrival, they notice that the room is filled with smoke, and TJ is lying down in the bathtub, bleeding heavily. In the aftermath of this event, TJ, who now believes that the sofa is possessed by evil forces, opts to stay at his mother's place down the street. Regardless, 
us. The sofa doesn't stop following him. Later that night, TJ hears tapping on his window, and upon investigation, he sees the sofa outside. Come on, baby, kick your feet up! Freaking him out, he frantically tries to shut the window, but the sofa blocks it and breaks into his room. He screams for help, but his voice goes unheard, as his mother has her headphones on. As a result, the sofa stabs him with its sharpened upholstery spring, resulting in his demise. The couch is made of memory foam, and it never forgets. Elsewhere, Maxie's grandfather delves deeper into debook research and unearths that it feeds on the souls of its victims. Following this, Jack and his girlfriend perform a ritual, enabling him to relive his vision, this time with more detail. As he flashes back to the past, he witnesses a woman slitting her throat in front of another woman, while a man screams from a distance. As soon as Jack snaps out, he confides everything in his girlfriend, and they come to a conclusion. They need to find the sofa, because whoever has it is in great danger. Back to Francesca. She wakes up on her sofa and finds her underwear on the floor. As she goes to pick it up, she sees a reflection of a man in the door that mysteriously vanishes. She slowly proceeds to check the door and window, but finds no one there. Suddenly, she wakes up in her bed, revealing that it was all just her dream. I, too, have dreams about being stared at while underwearless. Just then, she hears a buzzing sound and gets out of bed to inspect. As she looks around, the sofa inexplicably moves, scaring her heart out. She hastily makes a call to Maxie and summons her over. Sensing the urgency of the situation, Maxie drives to Francesca's, only to find her sitting on the doorstep. Seeing her in a disturbed state, Maxie brings her to stay at her place for the night, while the sofa watches them as they leave. The next morning, Francesca returns back to her place, and while staring at the sofa, she receives a call from Detective Gravy, summoning her to the station ASAP. As she prepares to leave, she stumbles upon Maxie's cousin, Ralph, one of the guys who is obsessed with Francesca. As usual, she turns him down and heads towards the station. Furious by the rejection, Ralph breaks into her house and begins installing several cameras, all of which is observed by the mysterious sofa. Ralph also goes to Francesca's bedroom and starts fooling around. During this time, the sofa slides in, come fool around on me, and smashes his head with an iron, killing him on the spot. At the police station, Francesca receives the shocking news of her boyfriend's demise. Detective Gravy suspects a connection between this case and Frederico's. He then provides her with a list of suspects, and Francesca identifies Ralph as a potential perpetrator, unaware of his fate. Gravy also obtains forensic lab results, revealing the involvement of Warren, a guy with a criminal record. On the other hand, Jack discovers that the recliner sofa was delivered to Francesca, and Ashanti recognizes her as Maxie's best friend. Without delay, they urgently summon Maxie home, and warn her about the sofa's evil possession, also emphasizing that her friend is in danger. With this information, Maxie goes to Francesca's place to check on this mysterious sofa. The moment she enters, she witnesses Ralph's body being dragged away. As she takes a closer look, she is left in shock to notice that Ralph's pants are down and the sofa is throwing the body off the balcony. She then tries to retreat quietly, but accidentally makes a noise, alerting the sofa to her presence. In a desperate bid for safety, she locks herself in the bathroom, but she inadvertently drops her car keys in the process. As the sofa attempts to break in, Maxie climbs out of the window, only to slip and fall unconscious into a dumpster. Despite being at Maxie's place, Francesca can still hear a whispering voice emanating from the kitchen sink. Before she can inspect further, she is in interrupted by the detectives, who are there to check on her well-being. Francesca expresses her concern for Maxie, because the latter hasn't answered her calls for the past two hours. Following this, Francesca, accompanied by the two detectives, heads to her apartment, finding Maxie's keys on the floor. They attempt to contact her again, and this time, they hear ringing sounds from below. The detectives proceed to search the dumping area, only to discover Ralph's lifeless body. At the same time, Francesca hears the sofa whispering the name, Valerie, which freaks her out. In response, she gets into Maxie's car and drives away. Afterwards, Francesca receives a call from Maxie's grandfather and goes to meet him. There, the old man briefs her about the D-book. She wonders about the name Valerie, which reminds him of the couple from the 1800s, Gerard and Valerie, who practiced witchcraft. They then delve into history and unearth that Valerie committed the 
unthinkable in front of Marie, who happens to be Francesca's great-grandmother. According to Jack, Valerie possesses the ability to elicit obsessive devotion from whoever crosses her path, which is exactly what Francesca experiences. They also realize that Francesca hosts Valerie's spirit and that she has been fully awakened by the presence of Gerard, who now inhabits, yeah, the sofa. The old man further theorizes that Frederico's occult magic opened a portal that allowed Gerard's spirit to possess the recliner. The two spirits are now trying to reunite, although Jack is uncertain how this is possible, since a debuk needs a human host to do so, and Frederico is supposedly dead. Jack then devises a plan, putting these two evil spirits in a specially constructed box and burning them. He begins working on it, but soon suffers from a heart attack. In the aftermath, Francesca continues working on the plan, while Ashanti calls medical help. Elsewhere, Detective Gravy interrogates Warren, who reveals that Frederico asked him to amputate his legs to fit inside the recliner. Simultaneously, Detective Grape is at Ralph's house, where she finds the camera footage from Francesca's apartment. She reviews one of the videos and is taken aback to see the sofa moving automatically. Knowing that something is wrong with the sofa, she immediately heads towards Francesca's house after alerting Grave. By this time, Francesca arrives home with the debuk box and screams at the sofa to get in the box. When it denies, she tries setting the furniture on fire, but it continually blows out each match flame. It's not my birthday. Not long after, the sofa gets up and slowly walks towards her. But before it can harm her, Gravy arrives at the scene and shoots at it, revealing Frederico inside. Another shot results in Frederico's demise. Unable to grasp the situation, just like the audience, Francesca rushes to the bathroom to consume her relaxing pills. Suddenly, Valerie's spirit grabs her from the closet and possesses her body completely. A short while later, the wounded Maxie comes out of the dumpster and walks upstairs. Francesca quickly embraces her and tells her that everything is over now. However, we see an evil smile on her face through the mirror, indicating her evil possession. Several days later, Detective Grape receives a call from the mortuary, informing her that Frederico's body has been decomposing for at least two weeks. Sensing an unresolved issue, she quickly heads to Francesca's apartment. On the other hand, Maxie goes through her grandfather's research and learns that the Dibuk can access human carcasses to store souls after death. If the body is unusual, usable, the soul can be transferred to the nearest object until a new host is found. Meanwhile, Gravy is seen at Francesca's apartment, having an unusually flavored tea, probably poisoned. Soon after, he collapses to the ground, and his body becomes possessed by Gerard's spirit. Detective Grape arrives just in time to witness the completion of the soul transference process. After this, the possessed Gravy gets up and kills Grape before heading out with Francesca. Now, the spirits of Gerard and Valerie are finally together. Maxie witnesses all of this from outside and sneaks into the apartment after their departure. She is on the verge of calling 911 for help when she notices the sofa moving. Upon gazing at its button eyes, she sees an image of Francesca falling. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.